Number 41, write Lua structures for the following. And then we have A through D. Okay, so we've already done number 39 and 40. Those were like introductory Lua structures. These are going to be more abstract, I guess. Um, I'll explain when we do them why that is, but um, we're still following the foolproof Lua structure method. And I just want to give a preference that teachers and professors may have a different way of doing Lua structures. Um, any way to do them, there's no, there's no like arbitrarily right way to do Lua structures. There's many different ways to get to the same answer. So I just find that my way that I'm going to show you guys here is the easiest for students. That's what I've been seeing for the years that I have been tutoring. Um, so I, I want to make it as easy as you on you as possible to learn this stuff, but your teacher or professor might teach you a different way. But both answers or how to get to the answers are, you know, correct. It's just whatever you guys feel is better. So with that in mind, let's start. So for A, we need to find the Lua structure for ClF3. First things first, you got to figure out which atom goes in the middle. Because for number one, we have to write a blueprint for the atoms. And we have to find out which atom is the central atom. So the central atom, I'll just say Ca, is always the least electronegative, so I'll just put En, atom. And there are exceptions, just know that hydrogen is never in the middle, all right? So if you have atoms and hydrogen, hydrogen will never be in the middle, all right? But we got to figure out from chlorine and fluorine which one is the least electronegative. So that comes from you knowing the trend for electronegativity. As you go from left to right, electronegativity increases, and as you drop down on your periodic table, electronegativity decreases. So increases from left to right, decreases as you go from top to bottom. So definitely know that trend. Um, so between chlorine and fluorine, it seems like chlorine would be the lesser electronegative element of the two, which means that chlorine would be in the center surrounded by the three fluorines. So sometimes they will give it to you, like if I just look at this, I kind of can know that chlorine's in the middle, but just always double check because some, some teachers and professors can, can maybe slip one in that, you know, it may look it, but it's really not it. So we have seal in the middle surrounded by three fluorines. So I'll just put one F over here, one F over here, and one F over here. And now we're going to draw the valence electrons around each atom. So that goes by you knowing how many valence electrons are per each group. So one for hydrogen and then groups 13 to 18 across the periodic table is three valence electrons, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So it's this nice little trend that you have to memorize. So for chlorine and fluorine, there's seven each. So I will draw seven dots around each chlorine and each fluorine. So for chlorine, I'll put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And for each fluorine, I'll put seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And now we will only bond single bonds between atoms. So don't try to jump the gun and try to do double bonds. Just do single bonds, check, and then um, add multiple bonds if you need it. So in this case, I'll draw one single bond here, one single bond between uh, two electrons here, and then one and one for this. And now I will double check. And you'll check your outer atoms for the octet. An octet means that you need eight electrons. There are some exceptions. Hydrogen, for example, wants to have two electrons, and boron, if it's neutral, will want to have six electrons, all right? But we're just checking the outer atoms for the octet. So let's see. This fluorine has two, four, six, eight electrons. That's the octet. So that's a check. This fluorine has two, four, six, eight electrons. That's the octet, so that's good. And this fluorine has two, four, six, eight electrons. That's good. So all the outer elements have the octet rule, right? They all have eight electrons, which means that the, the central atom should be okay. But let's just check. 
This chlorine has two, four, six, eight, ten electrons. Oh boy, is that allowed? The answer is yes. And it's only allowed under a couple of circumstances. Your central atom can have more than eight electrons if below group, or actually I'll say below period two. And period two is this period right here, boron, carbon, nitrogen. So if you're below period two, you're allowed to have more than eight electrons in if it's the central. If you're an outer element, like all these fluorines, you'll never be able to have more than eight. But the central atom can have more than eight if that element is below period two. And chlorine is in period three, so it can have more than eight. Just know that there are, um, there's one exception that I can think of. Phosphorus can have a max of 10 electrons if it's the central atom, but everybody else, if it's the central atom, it could have a max of 12. So just know that I, I believe that phosphorus can only have a max of 10. So technically this chlorine, there's room for more. This one has 10, two, four, six, eight, 10, but technically chlorine, if possible, it could have 12. So that's the answer for this one. A is done. Let's do B. Let me just erase these just to kind of get them out of your way. So now we're gonna start all over again. So we got PCl5. Oh, I don't know why it's, okay, five. Now who's gonna be in the center? Phosphorus or chlorine? Phosphorus is over here, chlorine's over here. Phosphorus is the less electronegative according to the trends. So I'll put phosphorus in the middle surrounded by five chlorines. One, two, three, four, and five. And now we draw the valence electrons, you put the dots. So phosphorus has five valence, chlorine has seven. So five and seven around phosphorus and chlorine respectively. So I'll say one, two, three, four, five. And then I gotta just draw the seven around each chlorine. You get the idea. So while I'm doing this, who actually likes chemistry? Let me know in the comments. Are you guys taking this for, uh, you know, your MCAT or are you just taking it for an elective? What are you guys taking it for? I would love to hear from you guys. All right. So now since I put all the dots around all the atoms, now we bond only single bonds. So two electrons make a single bond. So one and one, one and one from here, one and one, one and one. And there we go. Now check the outer elements for the octet. So this chlorine should have two, four, six, eight. So that's good. This chlorine has two, four, six, eight. So that's good. This chlorine, two, four, six, eight. So it looks like all the outer elements, two, four, six, eight, they're all good, right? This chlorine has two, four, six, eight. So if all the outers are good, that probably means that the center is good as well. Let's see, phosphorus, two, four, six, eight, ten. <gasps> Can that be? Yes, because if phosphorus is the central atom, it could have more than eight. And for phosphorus, it's a max of 10. So in this case, we are good. We've reached our max, but that's okay because phosphorus is in the center. So B is done. C. B, F, three. Okay, so who's in the center, boron or fluorine? Boron's over here, fluorine's over here. Electronegativity increases from left to right, so boron would go in the middle, and then fluorine. So B in the middle, surrounded by three Fs. So I'll say F, F and F. And now we will draw those valence electrons. Boron has three valence, fluorine has seven. So I'm gonna draw three dots around boron. One, two, three, seven around each fluorine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. This is fun. <laughs> Ay. Okay. I promise it gets easier. I promise. You guys will know this in and out by the time chapter four is done. All right, so now we make that single bond. So one electron to one electron, one electron to one electron, one electron to one electron. They're all sharing. And now we check the outer elements. So this fluorine has two, four, six, eight electrons. That's good. 
This fluorine has two, four, six, eight electrons. That's good. And this fluorine has two, four, six, eight. So that's good. Now let's just double check the inner guy. Boron has two, four, six. That's not really the octet, but is that possible? Yes, because remember, when boron is neutral, it only wants to have six electrons. So that's an exception. Put that into your brain. Memorize that. Boron would love to have six when it's neutral, but it could have eight when it's negative. So C is done. And then last but not least, let's just do D down here. We have phosphorus, F6 minus. So this is now we're dealing with the negative charge. Remember, negative charges means that we actually gain electrons. In this case, we're gaining one electron. So if I can, let me just um, pull this up a little bit. I can probably kind of squish this over. Let me just see if I can. I'm just going to move it over here so I can have space over here. So who's in the middle, phosphorus or fluorine? Phosphorus is over here, fluorine's over here. Remember that fluorine is the most electronegative element, which means that phosphorus has to be in the center. So phosphorus in the middle, surrounded by six fluorines. That's crazy. So F, one, two, three, four, five, six. And now we need to draw the valence electrons. So five valence electrons for phosphorus, seven for fluorine. So let's get to it. There's five, one, two, three, four, five. And now for each fluorine, we draw seven. So let me draw the seven. This is kind of relaxing, right? No math, which is great. Even though, even though I kind of love math but sometimes it's fun to draw. So I'm just finishing up over here. I'm putting seven around each flooring just to show you guys. Okay, and now we actually, we have to take into consideration this negative. You always do your negatives and positives right after you draw your valence electrons. So in this case, we should gain one electron. Now, in this case, if I add it to any flooring, that fluorine will have eight electrons, two, four, six, eight. So that means that it wouldn't even want to bind, right? If this fluorine has eight by itself, it's like, why do I even have to bind? So I won't add it to the fluorine. Instead, I will add it to the phosphorus. And in this case, I'll put it over here. Now we make a single bond for each connection. So one, two, electron to electron. Electron to electron, electron to electron, and electron to electron. And then you check your outer elements. Now here, fluorine has two, four, six, eight. So that's good. This fluorine has two, four, six, eight. As you can see, there is a trend. Two, four, six, eight. Two, four, six, eight. We are good for all of these, right? You guys see it. Last but not least, two, four, six, eight. So we are good. Now, phosphorus, let's just check in the middle. It has 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, but that's okay because phosphorus, phosphorus can have more than 8 electrons if it's the central. Now, over here, I put that phosphorus had a max of 10 electrons. However, that's when it's neutral. When it's a negative charge, like it is here, then it can have the 12. So just know that phosphorus, if it's neutral, it can have a max of 10, but it can have a max of 12 if it's a negative charge. So in this case, I could just box this answer off. I have to bracket it. I have to put the charge here to make D correct. And that's it. So there you guys go. Number 41 is done. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hopefully this helped. Let me know in the comments what you think of my foolproof Lewis structure uh, outline. I hope it's easy for you to understand. If your teacher or professor teach any differently, let me know. Thank you so much, guys. Let all your friends know about this. Let all your classmates know. You guys can all study together, and it will be one big fun party. <laughs> anyway, I'll see you guys in the next question. Bye-bye.